welcome to day three of 15 of my vlogs. Still in Panama. Ooh, vlogging on the plane, something that I haven't done in a really long time. But I do want to talk about um, transitioning from training into real life on the plane, being on the line, uniform on, strut down the airport, real life flight attendant deal. So I just wanted to do like the intro or whatever on the plane, but I'm going to wrap all this up once I get to my layover. So see you guys in a bit. Okay, I don't have much time. I literally just like put a jacket on like because I have pickup in a little bit, but today, really quickly, because I'm on the Wi-Fi, we're just gonna go there for this vlog really quick. Um, sorry, I'm making tea, hold on. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, so, transitioning from training into being a flight attendant, and I'll just kinda tell you all my personal experience and add a few things to that. June, July, August, and I will even say September still of the last year <laughs> Cute. were the probably the four toughest months of my like 20 something year old life. Not even gonna lie to you guys. Um, first of all, I finished training. It was so emotional. I was so proud of myself, so excited. I felt like Nobody really knew what I went through. Nobody's really going to appreciate it and understand it fully like another flight attendant. And that's true. And for the people that go through training, you know, like, door drill days, you're just like, no one told me that this is what was going on, that this is what's happening. But we know. <laughs> and that's why I respect flight attendants so much. But after training, I had two days, essentially. I commuted for the very first time, booked the ticket, or... Um, my instructor actually like helped me book it because so I, I didn't know anything about anything. I didn't even know how to book my own jump seat. I didn't know about standby. I didn't know about commuting, like how hard it would be, crazy the airports were. Essentially, Atlanta was the only airport that I had ever even been exposed to. So I was just like, not thrown to the wolves, but I was just like, wow, this is a lot. Like, woo, it's just so much going on. I sat behind a desk all day. Now I'm up and on the go and like people are expecting me to get where I gotta get quickly and in a hurry. So I was, I'm from Louisiana, you guys know that. I moved up north to Minneapolis. Let me just say the people were so sweet. Everybody was so nice to me. I will never forget my first, um, the first lady who like opened up her home to me and I stayed with her for a month. So sweet, helped me out. With Minnesota was very caring and loving. But I am a very like, I'm gonna figure this out type of person, like on my own. I won't ask for help, not because I feel too proud or whatever, but because I'm like, I need to do this, like I need to do this for me. So I get to Minnesota. My little country self is up north like, what? Uh, my very first trip, I, um, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, it was a San Francisco turn and I forgot about piggybacking, like I just completely like went blank and I like kept pulling the carts back, kept, kept pulling the carts back because the lady in front of me was doing hers and then she was like, wait, like why are you skipping all these rows? I was like, oh I just kept going because you were and she was like, kind of like annoyed with me like I could tell but I was it was an accident she knew how junior I was it was my first trip like and so she was kind of like okay <laughs> like let's pull them back this is what you're supposed to do try to do this so every mistake I ever made on the line which is every mistake known to man um I just was like learn from it now this happens I find like a lot and no one really talks about it when you first start flying and serving like and you're giving drinks out your hands shake and I don't know that this happens to everyone it happened to me for a while like I would like okay like I'd be oh da, 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 not even necessarily nervous at first my first couple trips I was nervous but I would they'd be like okay I want a diet coke and I'd be like all right <laughs> like, seriously like it's just like what I don't even know what that disease is called or the illness where you sh shake, but I'm like, oh my, am I getting that? But it goes away. So my hands would shake really bad um, whenever I would do the service and some people would be like, are you all right? I'm like, oh no, it's visible. They can see it. I'm just smiling through it. Like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't know, what, I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, but transitioning was so difficult and it's something that no one can really prepare you for. Essentially, the best thing that I found with like asking 
questions asking around and I would like always go to the airport early number one I would go early because I got lost all the time one time I had uber drop drop me off to the wrong terminal I was in the international one and I could not figure out how to get back to the gate and I'm calling scheduling like I'm in the airport I just don't know how to get I'm confused I'm junior no don't fire me they're like calm down like it's okay like all these things I did wrong everyone's like stop freaking out everyone messes up it just made me feel like okay um but money I was so broke like I look back now and I'm like how did I even like if my aunt or my family even knew how broke I was during that time they literally would have been like Ashley why didn't you come to us why didn't you ask us like and it's good to have like family that you can like even ask us some, some people don't but I'm just so like I'm an independent woman who don't need nobody <laughs> like I just am so like not into asking for help so literally I was like bologna sandwiches every day um hoping and praying fingers crossed that there were crew meals or like boxes or whatever snacks that I could eat to like save money because airport food is so expensive I mean I was just the brokest I've ever been I was spending all my money on like bus tickets uber and trying to finish paying my bills and stuff like I got student loans to pay I got bills so I'm just like mm -mm. and those first couple of checks <laughs> no <laughs> it gets better it all got better though continuously I look back now and I'm just like thank you thank you thank you for getting me through that because that was a rough patch but definitely save up if you can for training because once you get out of training, your first couple checks aren't even complete checks, so you will need money and you will be broke and it will suck and you will live off the bread and butter. Now some people have help and you know some people's families are like, I'm not going to let that, that happen to them, so this doesn't have, apply to everyone. But just know funds will be low. Um, your uniform, you will... Um, either explode into out of it like ooh, start getting on this weight or you will shrink and need it taken up or you will stay the same now maintain your health by all means do what you got to do to be healthy drink water eat vitamins exercise you guys still try to do all that but but let me say this because there are flight attendants I know that bring their meals with them every flight snaps props you get it all because I don't know how people do it like I can't for the life of me meal prep no I will no I'm not meal prepping that's too much <laughs> and some people are so like concerned about being healthy and stuff and I'm just like essentially when you first get out of training you're not going to be that healthy your transition period is for you to figure it all out um definitely go to your manager ask questions tell them if and see that was I think my mistake was I was just trying to like trial and error and figure it out did, did it wrong okay learned from it instead of just asking like a normal person and knowing from the beginning no Ashley if there's two seats left open don't think you can book those and get on the flight book your jump seat like an idiot <laughs> um let's see what else transitioning was I think I learned quite a bit about myself just like it brought out the worst in me some days because I was so emotional and had to push through it and it's kind of one of those hard situations where you're so upset about something or you've done something so wrong and then you know you have to get on that plane and you have to smile and you have to give all your customer service and put your best foot forward and you got all this other stuff going on you have got to overcome that so that's just something like be an adult grow up get through it like because ultimately all those people on the plane they don't know your life story they don't know your situation they don't know what you got going on they don't know how junior you are they just know that they need to get to san francisco in in four hours tops and they're running late so let's go <laughs> but um walking from the bus oh i hated taking the bus i never took a bus before my life until i got to minnesota um so that was kind of like ooh, bus like i'm so used to having my car and taking myself wherever i gotta go and that was just like like depending on someone else like to me i was depending on the bus to be there when the time on the thing said and that just made me mad so figure out transportation from wherever your crash pad might be or your home might be to the airport quickly efficiently do that on an off day if, if you have to i actually took an off day went in minnesota's airport and like what was walking up and down the the gates and seeing where egg gates are because because one time i got lost going from g to f because they were just so i was i thought that they were just like right by each other nope <laughs> so i just spent the day like learning the airport and how to get there and when to get on the train and where to get off at and where the bus dropped off at so that helped a lot um let's see transitioning into uh, 
your own independent person. Like, some people are just come out the womb independent. But some people, <laughs> some people have to learn it. And they have to learn it the hard way. And you are alone on this job a lot. Like, essentially, you have to pull your weight every time you sign in. Every time you come to work. Every single time. Hundreds of people are depending on you to be there, to be on time, to bring your best, your A game. So, that's a lot of weight on your shoulders. Training prepares you for that. Worst case scenario, you know what's going on. But best case scenario, bring your best to the plane. So, um... I mean, I have been junior. I still am junior. Let's be honest. I'm an Atlanta-based flight attendant, so I will forever be at the bottom. <laughs> I won't. It gets better, but it's just like I, my heart always goes out to junior people because like we struggle. We can go through it, and and ultimately everybody has. So even that senior person that you think, oh, you bid, you get whatever you want. Like you actually can hold Thanksgiving off. It's like they were on reserve for 10 years where their suitcases and bags were packed and they didn't know where they were going. I can't imagine being on full reserve. Like I can, I just, I would love to like know more about reserve cause I, cause I don't, but I'm just like, I can't like 30 days of not knowing where I'm going. <laughs> what? <laughs> but, um, yeah, you guys, transitioning is something that I really, it's one reason why I like to open up my social media because a lot of people reach out to me on a daily basis and saying, I just got a CJO for, you know, this airline or I just finished training or I'm in training right now. I just need some encouragement. And I'm like, oh my gosh, let me like write you a, a book really quick because it's going to get better. Like, I think it's just so important because sometimes you really just need someone to give you like that little push, that little like don't like okay and I always had that so I think that that's real that helped me so um I'm happy to like be that if I can so um I'm trying to upload this on on wi-fi the weather in Dallas right now is like <clears throat> I told my family I'm like don't even come get me I'm sleeping it's raining like eh, no so I'm gonna upload this real quick and if you all have any questions of course leave them below day 3 of 15 I'm doing this I can't believe I'm sick of daily vlogging I can't believe I'm vlogging on my phone I had to set up a tripod because it was just driving me crazy yesterday trying to hold my camera so um yeah see you guys in my next one bye